Hey, hey, hey. How are you, sir? Good to see you, sir. You. It's great to see you too. It's funny. It's good to see you. How are you doing? I love that. Do you want to kick it off or do you want me to kick it off? Okay. My remarks are pretty short. So, is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Pleasure. Welcome, everyone. We are gathered here today in our nation's capital with one clear message. It's time for Puerto Rico statehood now. It's time to fulfill the promise of democracy and grant true equality for our fellow Americans back on the island. This promise that each generation of Americans before us has kept as state after state in this great land have been admitted to the Union as part of the rich history of our amazing Republic. On November 3rd, 2020, Puerto Rico held a referendum. It was during the general election when turnout was at its very highest. The ballot language was simple. Statehood, yes or no. And Puerto Rican voters by a majority of 52.52% voted yes. We hear pleas of equality from our fellow Americans back on the island. And we must recognize that a majority has asked us for statehood and we must respect it. So today we act. Today we introduce the Puerto Rico Statehood Admissions Act. Today it establishes a framework for admission, including a presidential proclamation upon its passage, a ratification vote, the election of US senators and representatives, and the continuity of laws, government, and obligations. Our brothers and sisters back in the island have been through so much. An over decade-long recession, devastating hurricanes Maria and Irma, draconian budget cuts under PROMESA, earthquakes, and now COVID-19. They have finally decided enough is enough, that their territorial status and second-class citizenship isn't working, and it's time for change. We look forward to working with President Biden and congressional leaders of both parties to advance and pass the Puerto Rico Statehood Admissions Act to keep the promise of democracy and equality for our brothers and sisters back on the island. And in doing so, write an inspiring new chapter in our history for the next generation of these United States of America. And I'm going to speak briefly in Espanol. El 3 de noviembre, una mayoría de los votantes en Puerto Rico votaron por estadidad. Necesitamos respetar esta decisión. Y nuestro mensaje es muy claro ahora. Queremos estadidad para Puerto Rico ahora. Entonces hoy nosotros presentamos este proyecto de ley para admitir a Puerto Rico como un estado. Durante una recesión económica por más de 10 años, después un huracán María y huracán Irma, después una ley de promesa y cortas de servicios, después un de terremotos y durante coronavirus, el pueblo de Puerto Rico dice bastante, basta ya, es tiempo por cambio, es tiempo para proteger democracia, igualdad por puertorriqueños, es tiempo para la estadidad. I'm very pleased to be able to have our resident commissioner, my co-introducer, my partner in liberty, Commissioner Jennifer Gonzalez Colon. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. I'm happy to be here as the only member of Congress representing Puerto Rico, elected by 3.2 million American citizens living on the island that cannot have any senators elected from the island. They are part of the U.S. since 1898. That a day like today in 1917 obtained a U.S. citizenship, but still is not a first-class citizenship. We cannot vote for our commander-in-chief. We do not have four members of Congress, but yet Congress has all power over us. And today is a great day that we can have a bipartisan bill being introduced in the House with more than 43 members of Congress 
fighting and acknowledging the results of the plebiscite. This is not the first plebiscite uh, the people of Puerto Rico has voted. This is a self-determination, the results of last November. I want to say thank you uh, to Congressman Darren Soto from Florida for listening to the people of Puerto Rico. The people of Puerto Rico voted. And I want to say thank you as well to the Dean of the House, Congressman Dong Young, that has been fighting for statehood as well for Puerto Rico. I want to say thank you to Congresswoman Stephanie Murphy, which is with us today. Uh, Congresswoman Maria Elvira Salazar, Miami, that is here with us as well. Congresswoman uh, Val Demings uh, from Orlando, that is here with us. Uh, Senator Hendrick from um, uh, New Mexico, that is with us uh, as well. And I want to say thank you to all members of Congress that actually uh, co-sponsor uh, this bill with us. And with us as well is the governor of Puerto Rico, former member of Congress, Pedro Pierluisi, that knows how important it is for all of us to have the tools uh, to move forward and to move the island not just out of poverty, but actually to have uh, self-determination. And uh, this is a great opportunity. This is a simple bill that will pass in the House, pass in the Senate, uh, and having the president to sign a proclamation would allow the people of Puerto Rico who voted, as uh, Darren Soto just explained, in an absolute majority for statehood. And this is not the first time, as you may be aware, in 2012, we voted for statehood, 61%. Then in 2017, 97% of the island voted for statehood as well. And then this is the first time ever we did the same question Alaska and Hawaii did. You want to become a state of the union, yes or no? And it was held in conjunction with the uh, local elections in November. And the people voted yes. And it's important to note that statehood got more votes than any other politician in the ballot, <laughs> than any other party on the island. So this is an issue where all Puerto Ricans agree is the future of the island. And this is one of the reasons many Puerto Ricans are leaving the island. And they moved to Florida, they moved to Texas. There's a reason there are more than 5 million Puerto Ricans of Puerto Ricans descent living in the mainland and just 3.2 living on the island. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a time where statehood is going to happen. I don't know how long it gonna, it's going to take, but I think it, it's, it's been long enough uh, where this unfinished business on American democracy uh, needs to get to one end. And uh, I, I'm grateful, uh, grateful of my friends in the House, and I, I hope soon to be in the Senate, uh, that we can have a bill, we can have this discussion in a bipartisan way. Um, this is not an issue of the Republican Party. This is not an issue of the Democratic Party. This is an issue of democracy. This is an issue of self-determination. This is an issue of the rights of American citizens living in Puerto Rico that needs to need to be heard. Um, and, and, and again, this is the first time ever the government of Puerto Rico, through their state legislator and their governor, asked formally in December of last year and requested to the president and to the Congress to be admitted as a state. That never happened before. So I think uh, we are in a, in a crucial time in history to make things happen. I'm going to say in Spanish for Spanish media as well. Me siento orgullosa de representar en el Congreso como la primera mujer al pueblo de Puerto Rico representando a 3.2 millones de ciudadanos americanos que no tienen derecho al voto por el presidente ni a dos senadores ni a cuatro congresistas. Y el trabajo que hacemos lo hacemos por voluntad y mandato directo. De hecho, yo represento a más eh, ciudadanos americanos que ningún otro miembro del Congreso. Y por eso, eh, una vez más, el pueblo de Puerto Rico votó en noviembre pidiendo convertirse en un estado de la nación americana. Puerto Rico es parte de esta nación desde 1898, cuando a través del Tratado de París pasamos del gobierno español al gobierno americano. Un día como hoy, en el 1917, el presidente Woodrow Wilson nos dio la ciudadanía americana, pero sin embargo al día de hoy todavía es una ciudadanía americana de segunda clase, donde Puerto Rico no goza eh, de todos los programas federales y nuestra isla está sumida en, los, en, los, en la pobreza. 
porque no tenemos la capacidad de pararnos sobre nuestros propios pies. Hoy radicamos un proyecto bipartita que nos va a permitir no solamente accesar y tener poder donde se toman las decisiones aquí en el Congreso, sino también alcanzar esa igualdad a la que tenemos derecho como ciudadanos americanos. Más de 236 mil puertorriqueños han luchado en las Fuerzas Armadas con mucho orgullo y valentía representando a nuestra nación y es momento de que esas voces se, se escuchen y podamos tener el derecho de votar por nuestro comandante en jefe. Le agradezco a mis colegas en la Cámara y en el Senado que escuchen este llamado, este mandato directo, no delegado, directo del pueblo de Puerto Rico en las urnas que votó y sacó más votos que cualquier candidato político, que sacó más votos que cualquier político eh, para escoger la estadidad. Yo creo que es el momento de que nuestra gente no se siga mudando, sino que tengamos esas herramientas para poder echar hacia adelante. Y agradezco que el gobernador de Puerto Rico esté aquí haciendo ese reclamo también junto con los miembros del Congreso. Quiero, si el compañero eh, Darren Soto nos permite, poder dejar que los compañeros eh, congresistas también se puedan expresar brevemente para que también el gobernador hable. Senator Hendrick, Hendrick can you uh, just uh, express yourself now? Thank you. Thank you, Resident Commissioner, and uh, all of my congressional uh, colleagues here. You know, every time I think I've been here a little while, uh, Don Young reminds me that I just got here. But, but for 12 years, I have served with Congressman Young and many of my colleagues in the House side and then in the Senate side on the committees that deal with the issue of territorial status. And I can tell you that the governor um, started a conversation with me about five minutes after we met as new members in, uh, in the fall of 2008. And it forced me to really learn my own history, to learn New Mexico's history, becoming a territory in 1848, uh, becoming a, uh, a state in 1912. And one of the things that shocked me was how similar the struggle really is, that the arguments haven't really changed. And I think, uh, you know, I'm very proud to announce my intention to, to introduce this legislation on the Senate side because we should not be comfortable with millions of American citizens in a place where, where people have been born as Americans for over a hundred years, that they would not have the same representation that all of us enjoy. The fact that we have millions of Puerto Rican Americans, that we have tens of thousands, if not over a hundred thousand American veterans who have served this country in places like Iraq and Afghanistan and across the globe. You know, we like to say Americans, we're all created equal, but some of us are more equal than others. And it's time to make sure that all of those Americans in Puerto Rico have the same representation, the same ability to fight for what is better and what is best in Washington, D.C., as all of us in other states enjoy. Um, and I think this is how we form a more perfect union. This is an idea whose time has come, and I'm proud to stand with my colleagues on this issue and with the governor. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Senator Hyrick. Next, we'll have the dean of the house, Don Young of Alaska. Oh, boy. Thank you, Darren. Right. Appreciate you being here, Dean. My pleasure, and I'm just sitting there thinking about it. 26 years ago, we passed the Young Bill out of the House. 26 years ago, we've been waiting, waiting, and finally we got two, one, one commissioner. Where are you, commissioner? Here. Je Jennifer, Darren, a uh, congressman, and it's a bipartisan need to take this job and get it done. Let's make Puerto Rico a state. I was thinking when Jennifer was speaking, you're going to get four House members. I'd say, why? You're better than four. I can tell you that right now. Good job. Uh, and I am the only member of Congress uh, from Alaska, so I sort of like being the only one. But this will work. I heard the same arguments when we became a state against Puerto Rico, the same arguments against Alaska. It will work. We need to get it done. It's good for Puerto Ricans, good for America, good for this great world of ours. Say we all are equal. So I congratulate both of you for being here and the senator and the governor. I really am excited about today. This is a 
a great time. I hate talking to this damn mask like they're there right now. <laughs> God bless you all. Take care. <laughs> I want to say I want to say thank you to 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 the dean of the house. I mean, he's been uh, fighting for statehood since day one, and I want to say thank you to him. I know uh, Congresswoman uh, Val Demings uh, need to leave, and so we, okay. we're gonna uh, let her uh, speak. Thanks for being here. Well, let me say good morning to all of you, and it is my honor to be here to stand uh, with my colleagues. You know, many people believe that we don't do much in a bipartisan way. But look at us this morning. We might not agree on a lot, but we agree on statehood for Puerto Rico. We are here in front of one of the greatest, most iconic buildings of what a democracy is supposed to be. We are, thank you, Senator, a, govern a, a government of the people by the people and for the people. We talk a lot about freedom and equality, but people who do not have the opportunity to make their own decisions are not free. Are we who we say we are as a nation? We're not talking about people who are not a part of the United States of America. We are talking about U.S. citizens. And I feel better Commissioner than I ever have, that this has been a heavy lift, but I do believe that the time is right and the time is now. And I'm absolutely honored to join my colleagues and stand with them and my brothers and sisters on the island of Puerto Rico to send a strong message that no, we're not red states or blue states, but we are the United States and their voices matter. And we're going to do everything in our power to pass statehood for our brothers and sisters in Puerto Rico. So thank you all, and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to just keep it in bipartisan order? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now with us, my friend and new colleague in the house from Miami. She, she, she was living in Puerto Rico for many, many years, Maria Elvira Salazar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, wonderful. And thank you, Governor, for being here and my colleagues. For me, it's an honor. And I thank you very much for having invited me to such a dear topic, which is Puerto Rico. I was raised in Puerto Rico when my parents fled Cuba because of the communist Castro regime revolution. And the Puerto Ricans opened their arms and their hearts to those exi Cuban exiles that were arriving in the island. And that's why I'm here today supporting you. And you've done a commendable job and in expressing to the Congress and to the American public why Puerto Ricans cannot be a second-class citizen anymore, and they need to be part of the union. So as my Congress colleague, Congresswoman Val Demings was saying, this is a bipartisan effort. This is something that Republicans and Democrats agree on and that we need to get it done. And I thank you once again for your leadership. I thank you once again because now I think the time is, is the time because of the political environment is the time to include our Puerto Ricans brothers and sisters into the union. And I thanks once again and thank you, Governor, for being here. I'm going to say it in español. Eh, mi nombre es María Elvira Salazar. Yo represento la ciudad de Miami, distrito número 27, en el estado de la Florida, donde tenemos más de 27 mil hermanos puertorriqueños. Yo me crié y viví en Puerto Rico por muchos años cuando mis padres tuvieron que salir huyendo del régimen castrista. Por eso los llevo en el corazón a los puertorriqueños y por eso estoy aquí dándole apoyo eh, desde el de bipartita, tanto republicanos como demócratas unidos en una sola causa, que es la causa puertorriqueña. Es tiempo que los, eh, los tres millones de puertorriqueños que viven en la isla sean ciudadanos de primera, ciudadanos de primera clase y que se unan y que todos nos unamos en este esfuerzo de hacer que, que lo, el, el Congreso Federal Norteamericano permita a la isla de Puerto Rico como el estado número 51. Le damos las gracias a Jennifer González que ha hecho una labor encomiable, extraordinaria en luchar porque esta iniciativa se lleve a cabo y se haga realidad. Gracias y que Dios nos bendiga y que bendiga a la gran isla de Puerto Rico. Gracias, Mary. Yeah, I, I want to have now uh, a friend that since uh, we arrived together in Congress, I mean, she's been a powerful voice for Puerto Rico. 
And I need to say this because there's many issues regarding the island, Medicaid, Medicare, uh, several federal programs, and Stephanie Murphy has been all the way with Puerto Rico, not, not just uh, one federal program. Uh, she's been she's been a powerful voice for Puerto Rico, and I, I, I'm I'm completely grateful for her. Thank you. With you guys, Stephanie Murphy. Thank you. Thanks so much. Martha. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm Congresswoman Stephanie Murphy. You know there are over a hundred thousand people in my Orlando district who were born in Puerto Rico or of um, Puerto Rican roots. And the state of Florida, Florida itself now has over 1.1 million Puerto Ricans, more than any other state. And the cause we're here to discuss today, equality for the people of Puerto Rico, matters to the people of Florida, and it matters to me personally. And I want to acknowledge a few friends and colleagues, um, beginning with Congresswoman Jennifer Gonzalez Colon. She represents over 3.2 million American citizens more than any other member of the House. And she does it with just skill and tenacity, and it's just such an honor to serve with you. And I also want to thank Congressman Darren Soto and Senator Martin Heinrich and my colleagues, uh, 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 Representative Young and uh, uh, Salazar, for all being here today with us. Um, they have been such strong supporters of the people of Puerto Rico. And then finally, I want to welcome Governor Pierluisi. I know the weather is a little bit colder than it is on the <laughs> island, <laughs> but, um, you know, I really uh, appreciate that you made the trip up here from Puerto Rico on this important day. And I'm really proud to introduce this bipartisan bill to begin Puerto Rico's transition from a U.S. territory to a U.S. state. I hear a lot of talk in Congress about the need to support self-determination in Puerto Rico. And I hear this phrase over and over again. Let me tell you what self-determination means to me. It's a very simple concept. It means listening to the people of Puerto Rico. It means respecting the people of Puerto Rico. And it means that when the people of Puerto Rico go to the ballot box and cast a vote on their political destiny, we in the federal government need to honor the choice that they made. And that's what it means to actually support self-determination. And in November, the people of Puerto Rico were asked whether they wanted to become an island or wanted the island to become a state or not. And the vote was free and it was fair. And a clear majority of voters said yes. And some voters said no. And, and I recognize and respect that. But again, a clear majority said yes. And now the ball is in Congress's court. And that's why we're introducing a bill that would admit Puerto Rico into the union after a transition period and subject to ratification vote on the island. This is the same process that was followed by Alaska and Hawaii. And personally, I look forward to the day when the men and women living in Puerto Rico have the exact same rights and responsibilities as their fellow American citizens living in Florida or any other state. And I'm looking forward to the day when they can vote for their president and commander in chief, two US senators and four voting members of the US House. I'm looking forward to the day when they're treated equally under all federal programs not worse, not better, equal. I used to work at the Pentagon and I now sit on the Armed Services Committee. I think it's absolutely wrong that soldiers, sailors, airmen, and mar Marines from Puerto Rico can fight and die for this country, but they can't vote for the leaders who make their national laws and they are treated unequally under those laws. That's not acceptable to me. So I promise you, in their quest for equality, the people of Puerto Rico will always have me as their ally and their champion. Thank you. Thank you. If you allow me, uh, there's a person here that uh, was a member of Congress for eight years. And he was elected governor of Puerto Rico uh, during last uh, November. Uh, he understands the issue about statehood and self-determination. He fought for that while he was a member of Congress in the Natural Resources Committee. Actually, he, he was the one who worked with actually Dong Young to make that bill pass in the House. Uh, and now he's fighting uh, to get this bill as well passed and respect the will of the people of Puerto Rico to fight for statehood. Uh, with you, the governor of Puerto Rico, Pedro Pierluisi. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Good morning to all. Today we commemorate the 140 of the granting of American citizenship to the people of Puerto Rico. More than a century, 
Merrick or still that should be guaranteed by the founding principles of American democracy. We've been proud American citizens for over a hundred years. Our soldiers have fought honorably in American wars, and our people have contributed to this nation in multiple ways. Yet, we cannot vote for our commander-in-chief and lack equal representation in the U.S. House of Representatives and the Senate. This past November 3rd, in a straightforward process, a clear majority of Puerto Rico in certain terms that they want equality and no longer consent to being second-class citizens. It is time for Congress to act on the moral and political imperative conveyed by our clear message. This recent bill filed by our resident commissioner Jennifer Gonzalez and our friend Congressman Darren Soto is the answer our people deserve process for Puerto Rico to become a state of the union. The next step is for the American Puerto Rico to themselves in a congressionally sanctioned referendum offering statehood to our island. Once Puerto Rico reaffirm the desire for equal rights, the admission will take place. Elect our congressional delegation and we will vote for president and vice I respect for all their status options, but the Puerto Rican people made a clear choice, expressing statehood is their preferred path forward. Today, about where the stand. First, in 2012, a clear majority percent of the voters rejected territorial status, and now, again, majority, almost 53%. Puerto Rico. It is Congress's responsibility to respond to that vote and to offer statehood. We have the courage to hold a down vote on statehood. We have that courage by Congress to offer statehood to the Americans of Puerto Rico. The fight for equality is a matter of civil proposals for a new process with other options because some didn't like the result show a lack of respect to the people's vote. I hear some say that we need consensus. Those of us who want equality can never consent to discrimination and unequal treatment. There can never be consensus for second-class democratic system. And the majority of the American citizens residing in Puerto Rico want equality. I thank, I thank Congresswoman Jennifer Gonzalez, Congressman Darren Soto, Congresswoman um, Stephanie Murphy, Maria Elvira Salazar, eh, the member of Congress, and actually, uh, I'm so, so glad that you joined this quest and as, a, as a former resident of Puerto Rico. I, I thank the Lion of Congress, the Dean of Congress, uh, Congress uh, Congressman uh, Don Young for being here. I thank as well my friend, Senator Martin Heinrich. I know he'll fight this 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 quest again in the Senate and uh, and I urge Congress to approve the bill and support the will of the American citizens of Puerto Rico we deserve a seat at the table we have earned it and we will not stop until we get it now I'll turn just very briefly to Spanish um, hoy celebramos el 104 aniversario de la ciudadanía americana que tenemos todos los puertorriqueños que residimos en la isla del Encanto. Llevamos más de 100 años con esta ciudadanía, pero cuando residimos en la isla la tenemos a media. Es una ciudadanía de segunda categoría cuando optamos por recibir en la isla. Eso no hace sentido. Hay que acabar con este discrimen geográfico que hay con los ciudadanos americanos que residen en Puerto Rico. Nosotros ya llevamos años preguntándole al pueblo cuál es su deseo, qué es lo que quiere para el futuro de Puerto Rico. Pero en esta última ocasión hicimos la pregunta que no se había hecho. Tuvimos la valentía de preguntarle al pueblo de Puerto Rico que dijera si quiere la estabilidad, sí o no. Por definición no puede haber una consulta más inclusiva, más justa que esa. Porque todo el que quiere la igualdad que representa la estabilidad 
pudo decir que sí y todo el que tenía cualquier objeción a esa opción de estatus tuvo la oportunidad de decir que no. Y todos los votantes que acudieron a las elecciones generales, prácticamente todos, se expresaron. Y eso fue sin que el Congreso nos hiciera ningún tipo de compromiso ni ofrecimiento. Eso fue después que la administración del presidente Trump objetó la consulta, con todo y eso. Casi 53% de nuestros votantes dijeron que sí. Ahora le corresponde al Congreso contestar la misma pregunta. ¿Quiere el Congreso que Puerto Rico sea un Estado? Sí o no, que digan que sí los que creen en, en los puertorriqueños, que digan que sí los que le quieren dar la oportunidad a Puerto Rico, igual que se la dieron a Alaska, a Hawái, a Nuevo México y a Florida. Estados que cuando aspiraron a la igualdad que representa la estabilidad, tenían economías que no estaban tan desarrolladas como las economías de los estados, pero querían aportarle a la nación, querían mejorar. Eso es lo que queremos en Puerto Rico, una mejor calidad de vida, aportarle a esta nación, diversificar aún más esta nación, enriquecer aún más esta nación. Y por eso estamos aquí hoy. Yo la verdad que le doy las gracias a nuestra gran comisionada residente, a dar en Soto, a todos los congresistas que dijeron presente en esta actividad, cuenten conmigo como gobernador de Puerto Rico y tengo que decir algo que me sale del alma. Es fácil oponerse a la estabilidad para Puerto Rico cuando uno disfruta la estabilidad en los Estados Unidos. lograr que Puerto Rico se convierta en un Estado con el favor de Dios y el apoyo de este Congreso. Que Dios les bendiga. Now we'll take a few questions in English or in Espanol. Uh, Jennifer and I. First of all, right now, Puerto Rico is a responsibility of Congress. Uh, all territories are a direct uh, responsibility of Congress uh, directly by the Constitution. So what that means is if we do not become a state, we will never be in equal footing and we will not have a direct responsibility. It, for a bailout for Puerto Rico we, we, a we, no, I mean, we are never asking for a bailout. We will be in equal footing contributing to the nation. Uh, but right now, we don't have access to a lot of programs that would allow people not, not just to grow, but to, to get out of poverty. Like many states, uh, those programs allow people to get out of poverty, to grow in, in, in their communities. And of course, one of the, uh, the items in this bill, if you're talking about the debt, is that uh, it, when Puerto Rico becomes a state, we are going to remain with our uh, debt And we, we need to carry on a lot of our uh, own issues. Uh, so this is not a, a big difference with other bills of other people that are asking for erasing the debt. This and, is not about that. And if I may, yeah, this bill in no way obligates the United States for the debt that Puerto Rico owes. Exactly. In no way. It just merely admits Puerto Rico as a state after ratification. Uh, secondly, there's a long history of policies here in the federal government that have put Puerto Rico behind uh, and so this idea that it has anything to do with a bailout is totally false and actually the uh, bill specifically established mm -hmm. uh, that the state will carry uh, their yes. debt so this is the only bill uh, regarding uh, the admission that specifically says that whatever uh, Uh, the debt is the uh, the territory will carry uh, with that responsibility. Uh, actually, they are, uh, and he, here we have it. It's section section nine of the bill. Uh, will have that uh, responsibility. So it's in the bill. Okay. Next question. Now that you're talking about the bailout, what will happen with the bankruptcy process? If the Puerto Rican community in a year 
No, nope. the the bill allows all processes to remain. I mean, is is section nine of the bill said that all processes that are running uh, under federal law will contain will continue as they are, uh, and as well all elected officials uh, that are in their posts are going to continue until the next election. So it's like all uh, uh, regular processes are running but will continue. I mean, this bill will not stop. Any process that is, e I mean, because you're talking about bankruptcy, but it's like you're running a criminal case under the court that's not going to be stopped because you are having uh, a state uh, 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 admission or you're having a civil case in a court. It's not going to be stopped because you're having an admission of the state that never happened in any other state. Sure, and Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico would have additional rights because it would be a state in bankruptcy and would have sovereign immunity, so it would provide additional rights to Puerto Rico for debts that it may have. So what, what would happen with the board? If the bankruptcy process continues, can you have the board, an uh, uh, oversight board over the state? The, the, those are things that should be discussed on, uh, on the, the committees that are going to have jurisdiction, uh, evaluating uh, and reviewing this bill, either in the House and in the Senate. Uh, those are kind of questions, like when Alaska and Hawaii actually got, uh, uh, got their statehood, uh, they were concerned about the federal lands uh, of those two territories, and, and actually the ratification process included some of those provisions. Uh, so this could be uh, included in, in, in more detail uh, when the committee studies th those issues. Sure. I, I do not expect the PROMESA board to be there beyond Puerto Rico being admitted as a state, if we're just to be clear on that. I think we're at 47, 50, we're at 50 co-sponsors right now. I uh, will get you that information. But culturally speaking though, at, at this point, Puerto Rico is still as far as the, uh, the uh, English language is a concern. You still have a good portion of the island that still doesn't speak English. How do you... How exactly are you going to square that? May, may I, yeah. First of all, there are several states that have several languages but not spoken. not like Puerto Rico. Like Alaska and like New Mexico and other uh, states. The, the language Island. issue would be a decision in state in state issues for the state of Puerto, of Puerto Rico. Federal uh, matters would have to be, are already in English and would continue in English. Yeah, and actually, and, and that shouldn't be an issue. English has become the dominant language in the world, and it's a matter of personal advancement to learn English. And of course, in Puerto Rico, we need to make sure that our, all of our population uh, becomes fully bilingual. Uh, but, but, but I should say the following. Um, actually, our cult cultural um, background, our heritage, it's an asset to the nation. Uh, Puerto Rico will truly be the first Hispanic state in the, of the Union. And that's going to be for the benefit of the Union. And, uh, and, and for those who do not like to see America diversifying, uh, we, we respect that. But it's a process that, that is happening. It, it's going to continue happening. And it's one of the main reasons why Puerto Rico should be uh, joining the Union. You go to a place like El Campo, and you're not going to have a lot of the English speakers in those areas. Where? Me, where? I'm sorry. Yeah, in Puerto where? Rico, in Puerto Rico, ever more so. So, people are learning English, and they communicate both in Spanish and English. And that's that process is is not going to stop. And I that's going to happen regardless and of I, a change of status. And I, uh, so it shouldn't be an issue in this process. And I can tell you, whether it's Orlando or Kissimmee, Florida, there's plenty of people who speak English or Spanish. This is throughout the nation. We're a, we're a bilingual nation, even a trilingual nation. So the, the idea of language is a local and state matter for Puerto Rico. For the federal government, all those proceedings have and will continue in English. We'll take our next question. Yeah, yeah. Matt, yeah. Yeah. question mainly for Congress to sew here. Um, we see the push for D.C. statehood. Uh, what is the legislative path for this? Is there a two-by-two two effort, or would you hope for this to be a standalone bill? What's the, what's the path forward? So while we anticipate both bills would be standalone bills, I personally would love to see both of them admitted two by two like we saw Hawaii and Alaska. And I do believe there's a growing coalition to do that in both the House and the Senate. Why, why, why you vote, you vote in Puerto Rico and not in D.C.? What is the difference that D.C. So D.C. has already had, I think, over 50 votes. We're going with the Alaska-Hawaii model 
which was a decision by the resident commissioner and the governor to make sure we're complying with tradition. And so there'll be a proclamation should this bill pass, which I believe we have a great chance of, and then that will guarantee Puerto Rico when they vote in the ratification vote, the next step will be admission and elections for two U.S. senators and four members of Congress. That's, that's correct. This bill is the consensus of the resident commissioner and the governor because this affects the island. Uh, I'm sponsoring it because I'm a big supporter of it and because the Democrats are in the majority. This bill and the language is the, is the language selected by those who represent the government, which is the way it has to be. And, and, and I want to say, and I want to say, and I want to say thank you uh, to to Darren Soto uh, because he respect, you know, the will of the people of Puerto Rico, and I'm grateful for that. Uh, the the process for Puerto Rico is completely different for the process for D.C. Uh, Puerto Rico is a territory of the United States, and and it's under uh, the watch of the U.S. Constitution. It's a completely different process. Um, so one of the issues is. Uh, how, uh, Alaska and Hawaii, I mean, there have been 37 territories of the United States that were admitted to the Union, and we can revise all of them. Some of them took five years, some of them took 20 years to get admitted to the Union. Some of them took two, three, four years. Uh, some of them took one uh, plebiscite, uh, some of them uh, took more. Even some plebiscites, uh, the majority of the people rejected uh, state, and even though Congress admitted them as a state. Uh, so in this case, uh, the path we're following is the last cases and examples of territories being adm admitted as a state, which was Alaska and Hawaii. So we are following exactly the same steps, the same questions, and the same uh, procedures uh, that Alaska and Hawaii did. Uh, why? Because we don't want to invent a new process. Uh, that was the last uh, two models, and they functioned very well. And, and, and one little thing, which is very important, we don't want to, uh, uh, for Congress to even give, give the impression that it is imposing its will on the people of Puerto Rico. That's why this, this, um, this bill uh, requests the people of Puerto Rico to ratify statehood to express once, reaffirm once more that they do want statehood. But they would be doing it after Congress says that if they, the majority answers yes, that then this will happen. That's why I anticipate a very strong vote for statehood once this bill is approved uh, by both the House and the Senate. Thank you, Governor. This concludes your press conference, but members will be available for individual questions. Thank you, everyone, for coming. That's what he said.